So Ron, it's so great to sit down with you as the host of the iConnections conference happening here. And it's so nice to see everyone getting together in person. Uh, how are you feeling? Oh, I am, I couldn't be more excited. I mean, you can just imagine the amount of effort and of course stress leading up to any physical event in the pandemic here, but hopefully we're at the tail end of it. Uh, it has been just a monumental effort on the part of my team to really pull this off, but it has been a massive success. We checked in over 2,000 people as of late yesterday. I'm sure at least a few more hundred today. So it, it's really been a, a huge success. Yeah, and you can tell everyone is excited to see each other in person because it's so noisy everywhere you go. Like even in the Absolutely. hallways, everyone's grabbing each other. Again, you know, for that conversation, um, that was lost. For, for people who aren't familiar, tell us a little bit about what you do and, and the sure. service you provide. So iConnections is actually a virtual platform. Uh, we provide capital introduction connectivity in the alternative asset industry. So hedge funds, private equity funds, all of the private fund structures that are heavily regulated and are not allowed to openly market, they come to events and platforms like ours to find connections to uh, qualified allocators and accredited investors. So most people don't know this, but you're not allowed to openly market these products. So the only way they can meet the sources of capital are through events and introductions. So it's a very old school uh, aspect of our economy. And typically this industry really thrived off of events and face-to-face -face meetings. So when COVID happened, of course, all of the flow of new meetings and introductions just ground to a halt. So we saw that opportunity and I had a background in this, in this space in the events world. And my partner, Chris Altamir and I uh, built a company called iConnections to create a virtual platform to connect the industry during the pandemic. Mm. And now as we're coming out of the pandemic, we launched this first uh, flagship event, which will be our annual membership event. So we bring our members together with the whole community of allocators that focus on alternatives. And you know, this is our first one and it was just a massive success. So do you envision a hybrid model? Will you do, I mean, the, it, it, the, the digital platform is the primary, but will you do in person in addition to that? Is that the kind of world we're living in now? Oh, for sure. It's, I, I think hybrid is really how events will work because with our platform, our, our very first event, our first virtual event, was a global event that had, I guess, about a thousand people in it, and we ran 3,000 meetings over two weeks. There was no way you could do that without a platform that connected people electronically. And now that we've gotten so comfortable with this technology, it just doesn't make any sense to keep your event local if you have the opportunity to make it virtual. So this week we had you know, just world-class panels, which of course people were able to view here in Miami, but we also streamed all that content into our platform. So allocators and managers from all over the world have been in the system viewing it live. You know, the platform just makes hybrid really a no-brainer. And in some way that sort of acceleration um, that the technology provides is is enabling the reach to be much greater than it would have been. Much greater. And I'll give you a really good example of this. Our, our platform, while we're, we're certainly trying to connect our community, a key aspect of that is that the software was designed to support a wide array of industry events. So since inception, we've probably hosted about 35 outside third-party events for trade associations, prime brokers, other service providers, managers. And we want to be able to do as much of that as possible because we're really good at events. We have a dedicated ops and AV team. A hedge fund isn't gonna have that, generally speaking. Even a lot of trade associations won't. So we've gotten so good at this, we just make the, the platform available to the community and they're consuming the use of it in a variety of ways. So one of the best examples was uh, a an event called Fun Women Week, hosted by 100 Women in Finance. Now this historically was a series of small meetings or small events that took place in ballrooms around the world with, um, I wanna say, probably a few hundred people in each case. We took this on the platform during the pandemic. It was 1,400 attendees. They hosted over 1,000 meetings and we made available to all of these female fund managers that were mostly small emerging managers five, 600 institutional allocators were suddenly available to them from all over the world. It's just, there's really no other way to produce that at such a low cost and, and such a fast pace 
than through a digital platform like like and ours. It's a great example because you're getting people in front who've maybe traditionally been left out or not had the resources to get in front of the allocators they need to be. So that's suddenly exactly they're getting right. access in a way that levels absolutely. the playing field. That that's absolutely true. I think you know one of the silver linings of the pandemic and how our industry has adapted to it is that because everyone is now comfortable with a virtual setup and virtual meetings, the bar for emerging managers is really much lower to access allocators. And what we've seen is that the quality of allocators that we can draw into a virtual event is far higher than it was historically for a physical event. You know, when you talk about the top institutional investors in the world, generally speaking, the world goes to them. You know, you won't find the biggest Ivy League endowments at most events. But a virtual event, you know, they can do that right from their living room, right from their office. And they're, they're really interested in exploring uh, new emerging managers, new strategies. And they're also, you know, these are philanthropic minded organizations. They want to balance the playing field. They know that there's been a lot of inequity in this industry. And this is a way that's fairly easy for them to at least start to give these funds exposure to what it takes to approach a Yale or a Stanford or a Columbia. So I, I think it's really been amazing at moving the industry forward in, in more than just moving capital. Yeah, and, and, and it's a great point. Some of them have a mandate to do that as well now. I know ESG is one of the themes um, of a panel that I attended. What are some of the other uh, issues that, that you heard uh, demand for from the people who, who attended? So the one that is clearly, I think, the hottest space right now is crypto. At our event, so the, you know, this event was one day of content. We had over 100 speakers yesterday on uh, three tracks uh, throughout the facility. Uh, and then today and tomorrow are all one-on-one -on -one meetings. We'll run 7,000 one-on-one meetings between investors and fund managers. And the fund managers in general that have had the highest meeting counts are almost all crypto. So interesting. So what? And now I think you hear a lot about how crypto is getting closer to being uh, sort of institutional ready, but they're not quite there. I think the volume of activity towards those funds is just too high for it not to at least be on the cusp of really happening. So I know that there's still work that needs to be done with the regulatory infrastructure to get probably the biggest institutions comfortable. But I would say it's, it's really close to happening if it's not already happening. Because you know the top, uh, the top fund in the event, I believe, had 42 meetings and another 10 that we couldn't even accommodate in the normal meeting slots. So it's like, well, I guess you're going to have to have a few dinners and you know, some super early breakfast to make those happen. Yeah, that's amazing. So, and, and what do you think is driving that? Because there had, been, you know, there had been a thought that macro adoption of crypto, you know, was, it, was it going to happen? Were these going to stay separate worlds? What, what do you think is driving that? And will that continue now that we've seen a pullback in some of the cryptocurrencies? You know. Uh, so I, I'm sure that the pullback will make some people nervous. I think you know that just happens whenever we have a, a significant pullback. But I will say the fund universe, the most sophisticated funds in the world, they are absolutely dabbling at least in crypto. I mean, they're pretty much everyone I talk to in this business now feels that crypto is just part of the game, and they can't not have some level of expertise and some exposure to it, whether or not the big institutions, the big pension funds will make a deliberate decision to put crypto into their asset allocation plan. That still remains to be seen. I have heard the beginnings of it, um, but it was right before the pullback. So yeah. we'll, we'll see if it happens. I, I think it's sort of inevitable. Yeah. Um, but at the moment, it's still a little bit of a question mark, I think, for those big institutions. Does that change your perspective on, on you know, what you're going to be planning for the future? Uh, it, it may have an impact on it, yes, for sure. I mean, as you know, what we're trying to do is always serve the community. And we're somewhat indifferent to what the community wants. It's just our job is to assess what that is and then do our best to provide it and make it available. So you know, when you think about the content that we created in this event, we talked to many trade associations, we talked to our sponsors, we talked to the biggest fund managers and really collected lots of ideas and uh, got their help making connections to lots of the, the best speakers that we had at this event. And we use all of that as our guide as to sort of where we're gonna take things. 
whether it's an event or in the platform, you know, one of the things the platform does that is, uh, has been really popular is something called a coffee chat feature. We've run about 500 of these over the last year, and they're small group roundtable meetings, and anyone in the system can create one. And there's been huge demand to create coffee chats around things like crypto. You know, you put, put something that people don't fully get, but they want to get educated on, and it gets picked up pretty fast. So, so what else is trending? Because it's kind of a barometer. Well, I'll say ESG has been, ESG, I think, for a long time, in my opinion, was more people posturing, wanting to, wanting to be on the right side of the issue, but I think not knowing really how to do it. So they kind of would signal, hey, I'm here, this is important to me, but you weren't seeing the checks written. I think through the pandemic, and I think largely as a result of a lot of the turmoil we've had in the country and the, the focus that's been brought to these issues, you're seeing real checks being written now. I, there was one female run fund that when we started the business, they were in our first event. I think it was a $400 million fund when we started, and a year later they were $2.4 billion, wow. which was just sensational. You, know, you don't hear many stories like that, and you certainly don't hear stories like that about a female-run fund generally. So to see that, I just thought that's great evidence. Now, it's just one data point, but there, I feel like I'm hearing more uh, stories like that one. Do you feel like the crowd here is feeling opportunistic or is it more defensive capital preservation? Because we've had some some volatility. We're entering a, you know, a situation where the Fed may be taking away the punch bowl. We may have rising interest rates. Things are different. Mm -hmm. Now, for people with a lot of experience, they've been here before, but you know, well, some of the younger managers, it may be a, a new you know, a new situation. What, what, what do you think the tone is? What are you hearing? Well, I would say when they registered, they were opportunistic and optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> you know, markets can move quickly, and this one's moving pretty quickly. Uh, I mean, for sure, the, some of the panel discussions were very much focused on how people are beginning to uh, reconstruct portfolios to deal with what people expect to be more severe inflation than we've seen in, I don't know, 40 or 50 years probably. Uh, so yeah, I think there's no question that there is more concern, uh, pessimism, defensiveness. You know, you can't go through the week we've just gone through in the markets without everyone shifting in that direction. So, but having said that, I don't. I also don't feel uh, the sense of panic that you saw. You know, in the financial crisis, for example. Um, I do feel like people are still generally optimistic about the future. Well, that's good to hear. What, what's next? What do we look out for? What's, what's next on the uh, radar for iConnections? Well, for us, you know, we're going to be looking very closely at crypto. I think it's too big an opportunity for us not to do something, something substantial there. We're super excited about our partnership with Scaramucci, uh, Anthony Scaramucci's business, the SALT Conference, which is, uh, has really been regarded as the most prestigious hedge fund conference in the world for a long time. And we are now the provider of the technology platform for those events, which is uh, a great opportunity for us. So we did their New York event last year. We'll do that again this year and hopefully expand to their Middle East event sometime in the fall. And uh, we're also looking at Asia. You know, I think there's just too much, there's too much happening in Asia. There's a tremendous amount of wealth creation that's happened in Asia. And there are, there are a lot of really brilliant fund managers there that the U.S. market has no real knowledge of, no exposure to. So what's interesting for us is we can both expose U.S. funds to Asian investors and expose Asian funds to U.S. investors. So I think you'll see something happen, something announced probably this year in that direction. Well, you'll have to keep us posted. But in the meantime, congratulations Thank on you, a Maddie. successful Thank you, Maddie. It was event. great being here. Thank you. Thanks for joining us.